Hey, good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. And welcome to Thursday and a day after the Fed had their big powwow and j Powell came out to tell us how good or how bad are things going to be. The Democratic National Convention, I guess, today if we're finally going to get Joe Biden. I wonder how long this speech is going to be. I hope for his sake. It's not very long because I don't think he can hold it together. Uh, But, man, we got so many things to talk about. We had that the big sell-off yesterday in gold, and I said, I think, get ready because it's going to be dovish, 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 and a major, major bounce back the next day. And it really depends. Right now, uh, gold's either up 20, depending on where you look. It's up 20 or down 50 uh, because – Again, we know this. There's this one-hour day. Gold trades 23 hours a day. And the 23rd hour is what we call electronic trading. In other words, there's not a single exchange in the world that is open. In other words, uh, New York, the COMEX, closed. London's market Closed. The Asian markets, Hong Kong, closed. No, none of them are open. It's just electronic trading. Uh, very little activity happens. You can make big moves happen, I guess is my point. And they did that yesterday because that's when Jay Powell talks. Now, is it coincidence that that's when they do it? I don't think so. Uh, but they had a, a big move in electronic trade, so that's the difference. The price is the same. Right? The price is the same. Gold's 1950, 1955, uh, and and the 24th hour, is, it's close. So one hour of electronic trade where no exchanges are open, but they still allow trades to happen. Then it closes, and then the market's open again in Asia. So right now, uh, if, if you're looking at where we, we sit today, uh, like I said, gold's 1950, 1955, depending on the contract you'd like to look at. Uh, silver is higher as well. And by the way, same thing with silver. Uh, $27 in change on silver. Uh, the news was, what did Jay Powell say? What did Jay Powell not say? And then, of course, today is Thursday. So we had jobless claims this morning back above a million. So that was negative, Right. And, again, this is the problem, you know, every day because I, I see these layoffs day after day after day, uh, companies announcing layoffs, and and, it, and it's such a wide variety of companies, right? It, it, it could be like Disney, right, or, or it could be Boeing, or, or it could be some some company you've never heard of that, that, that actually has lots of employees announcing layoffs. And at the same time, you know, there, there's some high estates, hey, we reopened gyms or we reopened restaurants or, or whatever it may be, the movie theater, right? So you're going to have some hiring as well. Uh, but if, at least for this week, it went the wrong way. We were hoping for it to fall, stay below a million, was above a million. Uh, the good news, right, good news was continuing claims fell. Uh, you know, we're still, right, you know, hovering near that 30 million mark, but they were down. So that was good. The thing was, though, the, the checks. This was supposed to be, we we're supposed to get this big wave of people running back to the workforce. Because remember, they were getting that extra money, and they were telling us on the TV, day after day after day, as soon as we stop giving them all that money, they'll all go back to work, and there's jobs out there for them. Haven't seen the big rush because continuing claims was at 16 million, and 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 now the, several weeks later now it's still at 14.8 million on the on the smaller number. And then you got all the the um, the gig workers. That's how you know when you add those in, you're back to that 30 million again. But we didn't get the big the big wave. It was that it was a million people. That was it. Uh, we were hoping for more. Uh, I will talk again about the extra money. How many people are going to get it? Uh, Right now, 11 states. 11 states have filed paperwork. One state so far is going to be sending checks out this week. 
uh, happens to be this state. Uh, other states are, are following. Uh, I only, And I also, here's the other thing that's weird. So you think about it, it's the, the 20th of August. And only 11 states have applied? Well, 11 states have been approved. Seven more states, I believe, applied You know, either yesterday or the day before. Okay, well, that's 18 states. Where's the other 32 states at? One state's declined. Uh, and it was one of the Dakotas. They said, hey, we don't need it. Right? You know, of course, they, they, they didn't have a big COVID problem there. But... I'm going to tell you how it's all going to work, and I'll use Arizona as the example. And so some people are going to get an extra $300. Most aren't, even the states that have applied. So you got 11 that have been accepted, seven more. So let's just say 18 states. They're all going to get approved. The problem is, and of course I've told you this, all the red tape that you have to jump through, most of these states – even if they said, yes, we'll, we'll, we want to sign up for the program, are still weeks away from getting any money. And it leads me to believe the other two, the other 32 states, the reason why they haven't applied is, you know, because it depends on the states, and especially blue states. The amount of red tape it would t- cause, they're hoping that Congress will act. The Senate's still not there. Listen, they're not there. Jay Powell was very, very concerned about this. We'll talk all about it next. Patriot Radio News Hour. Don't touch that. Though. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. So what did the Fed say? Because we know, here's what we know right now. The Federal Reserve and all the things that they did. Okay. So but you, got, you got the federal government, right? We know... What uh, the things that they have done, and we also know the things that they have not done. But the the central bank, there's things you know. Remember now, they talk about all these tools that they've got, and the tools in the toolkit, right? In this toolkit, seemingly never ending. And I've said this to to you for for almost two decades now. The central bank is not for us. They pretend that they're for us. I mean, they even have these press conferences now every six weeks. See, now the Fed used to operate in the background. They didn't even talk to Wall Street. They didn't talk to the banks. They were private independent, allegedly. That's gone. Heck, they have meetings with the banks every single day. They got Fed people in the banks, inside of the banks. They talk to Wall Street all the time. Now they they got to have a press conference every six weeks, and they make it appear like it's for us. Now you you have heard me, and I've been warning you. I, I don't get what's happened on Wall Street at all. If you take, uh, there are seven companies in the S&P 500 that are up 43% for the year on average. And we know who they are, the Apples, the Googles, the Facebooks, right, the Netflix. The other 493 S&P 500 companies are down 4%. I mean, it's just bizarre. And, of course, you think about, we got 30 million people unemployed. The central bank, everything they've done is to save Wall Street. Think about this. They buy loans to all of these companies. Matter of fact, the banks will give it to them because they know the central bank will buy them. Now, why wouldn't they? You know, you think about small business is what drives America. I mean, Apple's nice. It is. Right? Microsoft, sure, I'm, they're fantastic. Google, they're great. We love them. We don't employ that many people. I mean, we got 30 million people unemployed. I mean, it's worse now than the financial crisis. 
why wouldn't they set up a thing where, hey, we're going to buy all the small business. We're going to have small business loans, and the Fed's going to buy them all. Right? We, I know the, 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 the federal government, they did the PPP. That was great. Hey, listen, PPP was wonderful. If you were going to be shut down for 30, 60, or 90 days, it was great. Right? Of course, we know now, hey, it's a whole heck of a lot longer than that. Why not? If you can prove that you were a viable business before COVID, here's my track record. Why not have it to where you can get loans and the central bank will buy them? And that way, as long as you're closed, you've got money. And you can pay your employees. Nobody, you wouldn't even have to unemploy anybody. We're not doing that. No way. We're not for you. We're here to save Wall Street. We're here to save our banking buddies. Right? Matter of fact, we're here to save them so much, we allow them to lie about what their exposure to the derivatives market is. Think about this. Think about all the commercial real estate not being paid. Think about all the rents not being paid. They could all be paid. The, Fed, the central bank could be buying it all. Why not? What's the difference? Matter of fact, if you had done that, you wouldn't have had to buy all the debt from the big companies. Nah. Nah. See, again, we they want to pretend like they're for us, but they're really not. And really, when you think about what I just said, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Hey, I've been a viable business for years. Right? Give me the same thing you're giving Wall Street. Right? The banks, you know, but but that, that would make too much sense. Of course, they'd go, oh, we can't handle that. That's that's way too much work for us. Right? We just want to loan out to these seven companies. It'd be great. I wonder, wouldn't it be sickening if you found out that the central bank owns billions of dollars of Apple debt? Because Apple just Apple just went and, and did even more debt so they can buy back more stock. Right, wouldn't it be? I mean, I don't even want I don't even want to try to find out because it'll just make me upset. So yesterday, Jay Powell's talking, and just like I said, dovish, 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 talking about how well I uh, and dovish in this regard. He didn't put a date on it, but he let it be known that they're not going to raise interest rates for years. You know, matter of fact, people were speculating maybe 2025. That's how far, 2025, before they'd even think about raising a rate. Talked about uh, how bad the economy was looking and how Congress was going to need to act, in other words, Congress needs to send everybody some money. That's not our job. Our job is to save Wall Street, and we're doing our job. That was Jay Powell. Yeah, we're doing our job. Congress, you better start doing your job. And what, what came out of the minutes was the Federal Reserve was saying that the data is pointing to significant uncertainty and significant downside risk associated with the course of the pandemic. In other words, they really warned, like I've been saying, hey, underneath all the feel good, underneath the fact that we've made Wall Street look a lot better than what it really is, the actual data is horrible. And they're, they they are saying things are not for a long, long time, and they're going to keep buying, they're going to keep expanding their, their, their balance sheet. Here was one of the things, though. Here's the next thing Wall Street wants. And it's something where I was, like, scratching my head because I'm like, they're already doing this, but Wall Street actually wants the Federal Reserve to say it out loud. So Wall Street wants to feel good. We want to hear you say it. 
And what they want to hear the Fed say is we are going to now have a interest rate box, if you will. Kind of like inflation. They have a target, right? Inflation, Fed's inflation targets 2%. Now, of course, we already know, they tell us every single time, it's nowhere near 2%. You know, it's only 1.6 or 1.8. We never get to 2%, yet unless you actually live in the country and got to buy food and pay the power bill or buy a new vehicle or buy a house, right? If you got to do those things, you know inflation's way more than 2%, but according to the Fed, it's not. They want them to guarantee an interest rate, the 10-year note, as an example. Remember the 10-year note last week? I told you something really weird happened. The 10-year note rose, but the dollar didn't. And I said, you know, and it was too soon to say it was a pattern. And, of course, this week, what's happened? The 10-year notes come back down. They wanted the Federal Reserve to say out loud, we're not going to let the bond market function normally. Of course, they're already not, right? I mean, think about what they're doing. They're buying all the junk bonds, right? They're buying all the Wall Street debt, buying the mortgages, right? They're making rates be much, much lower than what they should be right now, right? Especially with this many people not paying. But they're making rates significantly lower. Now, what Wall Street wants is they want the feds to promise, hey, well, we're going to keep it that way no matter what happens. Which means to me, simply means why would Wall Street want them to say that out loud? I mean, that's what they've done. I mean, they've been doing it the whole time. I mean, that was the whole purpose. Why did they go in and start buying the market, the debt market? Because the banks didn't want to, they didn't want to take it as collateral anymore. And the reason they didn't want it as collateral was it wasn't worth the paper it was printed on. So the Federal Reserve stepped in. Of course, they told you, oh, we just wanted so the markets would operate smoothly. Which really meant we don't want the markets to operate properly. Because that's a normal response. Hey, wait a minute, we're going to shut down the country? <laughs> hey, I don't want to take any of your debt as collateral. I don't know. You know, the people aren't working. They're not paying their bills. Right? I don't care if there's a moratorium or not. Right? They're not paying. I don't want your commercial real estate debt. I don't want your mortgage debt, your car debt. I don't want any debt. That would be a normal response. The Fed wanted to make sure we didn't have a normal response. They started buying it all. So, in thinking about this, I'm like, wait a minute. The banks, because that's really who, and when I say Wall Street, I'm not talking, Apple doesn't care. Believe me, Apple doesn't care. Microsoft doesn't care. Google doesn't care. Okay. Now, the rest of the S&P 500, that, those companies may care. But the banks know things are going to get worse. Because otherwise, why would you want that? Why would you make them say it? Because they've already done it. And Jay Powell's already said, hey, we're going to keep doing it. The banks are worried that it's going to get worse. And they want the Federal Reserve to guarantee to buy it down. Right? And again, so what does that mean? How big does the Fed's balance sheet have to be? I just wonder how worried they are. I know this. If you listen to Jay Powell, they, the, the Fed is very worried about Main, about Main Street. The problem is they don't have, they're not doing one thing for us. Now, they say they're doing all of this. Oh, look, we drove down rates for you guys. No. 
How many small business loans has the Federal Reserve guaranteed and backed up? How many small business loans has the Federal Reserve bought? The answer is zero. None. Nada. No, nope, they don't buy those. They're not helping us. They pretend to help us. And this is the big problem. So now the Federal Reserve yesterday let it be very clear. Main Street's got problems, and uh, the government better fix it. And, oh, by the way, uh, that means a whole lot more spending. Uh, members agreed that the ongoing public health crisis would weigh heavily on economic activity, employment, and inflation in the near term, and posing considerable risk to the economic outlook on the median term. Not only are they, hey, we're not worried about just about 20 and 21. We're worried about 22, 23, 24, 25. And they're probably right. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Yes, ma'am. 800 Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, like I said, we got a gold's up 20 or down 15 either way. Uh, pretty steady right now today. Wall Street's not doing a lot. You would think after what Jay Powell said, it would be down huge. But, of course, remember, they're supporting that. They're, they're preventing Wall Street from operating normal. Matter of fact, the point all week this week, Jim Cramer again today is talking about the, how ridiculous the market is. By the way, this just hitting a lift. I haven't seen Uber yet, but Lyft, and, I, and I'm going to say Uber is going to do the same thing, is suspending all services in California after ordered to classify all drivers as employees. Remember, this has been an ongoing case in California where California says, hey, The Uber and Lyft guys, because remember, Uber and Lyft, you're a gig guy, right? And you know the rules for gig guys. Gig guys, you get nothing, right? You you stop working, you do this or that, you don't get anything. Of course, obviously, during the pandemic, they had a special program, and once that's over, you're done. But California says, nope, you need to make them employees, Lyft, Lyft's response, and I know Uber has said they're going to do the same thing. I haven't seen theirs yet. Uh, they're, they're done. They're not, okay, fine. We're, we're, we won't operate in California. What the effect of that is going to be, I, I don't know. But now, again, even more people not able to make money. And, again, this is the problem. With, think about what government's doing right now. Right? Preventing business owners from operating, right? Preventing people from going to work. I mean, it just makes no sense. Let's talk about the money. The Who's going to get extra money? Who's not going to get extra money? Some workers will get an extra $300 in unemployment benefits this week. But millions of out-of-work Americans won't ever see the assistance those left out largely low wage and part-time workers so according to the extra three hundred dollar rule mandated in the executive order if you didn't work enough hours and didn't you know qualify for enough of the benefits you don't get anything so uh you know when you think about how many part-timers there are out there. They're not going to get anything. It also appears self-employed gig and other workers may not get their relief in certain states, and they say Alaska. I don't know. Again, so many different rules. Right now, 11 states have been approved. None of them, including the seven others that are in the process, None of them are throwing in the extra 100 bucks, And my guess is that's going to be the case. 300 is going to be the number. No state's going to throw in the extra 100 Those states that have been approved, Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Louisiana, Maryland, Missouri, Montana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Utah. The only state 
that has started to make payouts. There's just one, Arizona. They are the only one that will be making payouts. Others, they just said, hey, in the coming weeks, I don't know how long the weeks are. Uh, currently, none of the none of them have done the extra hundred dollars, as I as I said. Uh, but here's the problem: is a lot of the states, uh, New Mexico, as an example, says they're still weeks and weeks away before they uh, are going to be able to send any extra assistance. And some states set a minimum. Hey, you've got to get X amount in unemployment benefits before you're eligible to even sign up, so those people will get nothing either. Uh, there was nine states that did that. A lot of different rules. And this is the problem with all of these things. Notice, though, the states uh, that said uh, that aren't on the list. California, Texas, Florida, New York. Some of them are blue. Some of them are red. Uh, the the really big states, Illinois, they're not on the list. And, and mostly because, and this is just my opinion, most of them, because they, they, the amount of red tape, they're not able to do it. The systems are old. Arizona, one of the things that I'm speculating. So uh, Governor Ducey said the reason why Arizona's not doing the $100, they don't have the money. They did have some unspent money that they got in the, uh, the, the, the big stimulus package, the last stimulus package. They said they could have only paid the extra $100 for like four weeks. And then that money would be gone and they don't have the money. Uh, I'm wondering if that's how they're paying it out so early. Is if Ducey's using that money, I don't know. I'm speculating that. Uh, I don't have any information on Colorado. I wish I did. Uh, but right now, Arizona appears to be the only state that will be making the extra $300 payment this week. And a lot of the states, like I said, as of right now, 32 of the 50 states haven't even applied. So, uh, again, Jay Powell yesterday kind of laying it all on his feet. And then you start to realize how big the issue is going to be. Uh, you know, we heard from Walmart, we heard from Target, Lowe's, Home Depot. They all had great quarters, great quarters. But they all said the same thing. August sales are down 30 and 40%. 30 and 40%, so a huge slowdown. That's really going to have an impact on the GDP numbers. You know, right now we're still looking at high teens. Uh, for the bank, you know, we lost 33%. Uh, right now, they think the third quarter is going to be up in the high teens. Uh, and this is, this is going to guarantee that we're not going to be in the 20s for sure. What about gold? Obviously, yesterday we had the reaction to gold. Everyone viewed uh, Wall, and I say everyone, Wall Street viewed the Fed not guaranteeing that they're not going to allow rates to spike up because we know they should. Uh, sent the dollar higher yet not a lot the dollar is still at 9260 right now it's not like the dollar went screaming higher but that's why they sold gold yesterday in the aftermarkets gold's come back today but when we look at where a lot of the gold goes right because the wall street guys they like to their paper they like to buy the gold etf gld is the most common one it's the biggest one gld is located in london of course you know london you know that's where the gold fix is so it made sense to be there something very interesting has been happening as the gld tried to submit their legal requirements i'm going to talk about that next 800 592 talking about the exchange traded funds. Uh, the biggest being GLD. GLD is headquartered in London. And I said, for the reasons I told you, right, that was where the London fix was. A lot of sense to that. We've talked about how all of the 
gold and silver ETFs have had massive inflows. I mean, really almost hard to imagine the size of the inflows. Uh, as an example, GLD alone, 166 metric tons in July. Just huge. And, and we talked about how the August contract, delivery contract, they had to take 100 metric tons of delivery, the largest ever for the COMEX. A lot of that was going to uh, other ETFs. Part of the reason why I really believe gold was well, has fallen here because the contract's almost up. So the contract's up early, not part of next week, and they want to make they want they just want delivery at a lower price. So it makes sense for them to try to drive it down, and then they'll run it back up afterwards. But that's just my speculation. What do I know? But something really interesting came to light in the holdings of GLD. See, they have to, by law, they're required for every 10 ounces of paper gold allocated, they have to put one ounce in storage. Okay, so every 32,150 ounces, that's one metric ton. Okay, so they would need for people to allocate 321,500 ounces to put one metric ton away. So when you think about them having to take 100 or 160 metric tons in a month, the type of volume we're talking about, Millions and millions of ounces month after month after month. Where are they getting it all? Right? And all of it, by the way, all of it has to be good delivery bars. In other words, from the exchanges, whether it's the London Exchange, whether it's the New York Exchange, has to be good delivery bars. One of the things that we found out in the filings of GLD is that they were having a little problem in getting enough gold bars. between Just between January and July, that one ETF alone had to find 348 metric tons of gold. And really, most of it really has been March through July. So, you know, let's just say, I don't know, 300, 300 metric tons of that from March in July. GLD says that holdings are claimed to have increased by a net 333 metric tons as of the 20th of March, rising from 908 metric tons to 1,241 metric tons now all the gold etfs combined are now over over three thousand metric tons but gld it's the biggest one that they, they alone have over 1200 metric tons now that's not shocking but what was shocking is inside of their report they they made some notations because they've had some problems getting enough delivery bars. And so they ended up, according to them, that starting on the 15th of April, because they only have to report every quarter, starting on the 15th of April, GLD had begun sub-storing or sub-custodian bars from the Bank of England. In other words, they're claiming, hey, we bought some bars or borrowed some bars from the Bank of England. Those bars are not at the GLD warehouse. 
Now, I could question, why wouldn't that be? Why wouldn't it be? If you're buying them from maybe, are you buying them from the Bank of England? If you're buying them, great, put them in your place. You do it with all the other bars. And that as of April 27th, so think about this, April 15th, April 27th, they were now storing 46, well, just under 46 metric tons at the Bank of England. According to their 2020 Q1 filings, GLD now is storing over 70 metric tons in the Bank of England. So I had to look it up because I'm like, ah, I thought England sold all of its gold. They didn't sell it all. They have about 300 metric tons, which isn't very much. But of that, 70, you know, almost 25, well, it is 25%. Just under, just a pinch under. 25%, probably right now it's probably at 25%. 25% of the Bank of England's gold is now owned by GLD. And why would they do this? You know, and they can say, oh, there wasn't other gold. There's gold out there. They tell you there's out there. I mean, I see the reports from the COMEX, uh, and I'm sure the London markets, there's gold out there. Listen, they don't want to pay. Can you imagine what would happen to gold if they got to go out and buy another 70 metric tons? And I guess, how does it all work? Again, another little sham going on. Either that or maybe by the end of the year, the GLD is going to own all of England's gold. Who knows? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. What does it all mean? I don't know. But I will say this, in their annual reports, it's very clear. The custodian, GLD, will hold all of the trust gold it owns in its own vaults, on their own vault premises, except when the gold has been allocated in the vault of a sub-custodian. Okay, right, which they're saying Bank of England is. And in such case, the custodian has agreed that it will use commercial reasonable efforts to promptly transfer the gold from the sub-custodian's vaults to the custodian's vaults at the custodian's cost and risk. In other words, okay. Yes, you can subcontract through the Bank of England. But no, it can't stay there very long. You have to move it into your vaults. And according to the GLD, they had 70 metric tons stored at the Bank of England. Whose gold was it? I don't know. Was it England's gold? I, I was saying it's England. Doesn't have to be England's gold. You know, they still store a lot of other countries' gold there. That's why everybody wants their gold back. As of uh, late July, because that was the when they did their filing. So I can't tell you uh, where it is right now. But as of late July, there were still 46 metric tons sitting at the Bank of England. Whose gold is it? Where is it? Nobody really knows. But again, here's the point I'm making. Be your own central bank. Be your own custodian. Have the gold where you know where it is, not where somebody else says it is. And the fact of the matter is we don't even know if that gold legally is even for sale. 800 951 uh, U.S. $20 Gold pieces today, twenty one ninety five. Twenty one ninety five. Uh, remember, we, we had that, that big pullback day. We got down to twenty one ninety five that day. Twenty one ninety five again today. Uh, Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. A uh, big shipping day here in Phoenix and Colorado. Jason's stacked up with people, uh, but we're up to date. We're 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 right on course. 
uh, with everything. We have new silver. Silver just hit here and in Colorado. More silvers on the way already, so we're, we're ahead of the game here. 800 951 U.S. $20 gold pieces. Twenty one ninety five dollars uh, Volume discounts will apply at 800 951 uh, Let's quick see if I, I'll check in here on Wall Street. Uh, Wall Street's up 12. The Dow's up 12 points. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back tomorrow. Final show of the week. Everyone take care. God bless. Have a great day.